What's up guys, I'm Charles with Addicted Fishing. We're out here doing a little stalker trout fishing. They do a little gig every Black Friday, stalk a lot of lakes in Washington and Oregon. As I was fishing, I noticed that my setup was working a lot more efficiently than the people around me. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to rig up a float and a pink mad river worm to catch stalker trout. Today I'm using a seven foot, it's like seven foot six four to ten real light rod nice action to it so you can get a little more feel out of these trout when you're fighting them you're not just towing them in for the reel i'm using an inspire a 20 a little bit on the smaller side you can actually use this for float fishing too so if you happen to have one of these reels already it'll work just as well for trout for the line i'm using six pound p line fluorocarbon and i got a few other things over here and i'm going to show you guys how to rig up the complete setup all right so the first thing that you're gonna have to do to rig up this setup is you're gonna have to go get a water bobber. These water bobbers, they open up here. You pop the end out and water actually pours out of them. Now this is actually gonna act as not only your float, but this is gonna act as your weight too. So I'm gonna do, first thing is I'm gonna slide this up my main line. Pull it through, just like that. Slides up freely. The next step to this is to get a bead just so that the bead, the bobber doesn't slide over the swivel that we're about ready to tie. So slide that on. Now that I've slid that on there, I'm just gonna take a standard swivel. It's a decent sized swivel. Don't have to get all crazy about it. Then I'm gonna tie just a normal fisherman's knot that you've been using since you were a kid. Loop it around. I usually go about eight times, nine times, depending. Normally I'd wet this line, but we've already been fishing with it, so it's okay. It slides down real nice. I take my Gerber scissors, get that end off. That's the first part of our setup. Now the second part of our setup is just gonna be simply tying a leader. I have this P line, eight pound, that I'm gonna use fluorocarbon it's great especially the trout can't see it i'm gonna rip off about three four feet Snip. and here i have a size four bait holder hook made by mustad you don't want to go too big four is ideal same thing just a simple fisherman's knot if you have a knot that you prefer you can go ahead, it doesn't matter. This is just the easiest thing that I can do and the fastest and I've never had an issue with it. I don't, I'm gonna clip that tab off. You wanna get that tab off because as we're sliding this worm up, as you'll see, it'll try to blow the worm out. So you wanna get rid of much of it as possible. Just like that. All right, for the final step, completing this rig up. I generally like to use between four to five feet for this setup. Where we're fishing right now, it's a little bit weedy, so I'm going a little bit shorter, so I'm gonna go about, ah, about three feet. You can play with that leader length, it just all depends on how hard it's gonna be for you to cast. Now that I've got my hook tied, I'm gonna take the other end of that leader and tie it to my swivel. Through the eyelet. Spin it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back through the, the hole right there that you made. Let it down. You just need to trim that tab off. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to actually thread the Mad River worm on. This is the worm that I'm actually using today. They're a little bit smaller than what we use for steelhead. They're perfect for these little planter trout and they work amazing. What I'm gonna do is take them out of the package here. This is nothing fancy here. You don't have to get all crazy, but the better you put the worm on, the longer it's gonna last. The more fish you're gonna catch off of one worm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right through the tip here. And I'm gonna be very, very gentle to try to slide it just up the middle or else you'll blow that worm out. Will it still work? Yes. But you'll definitely catch a lot less fish on it. 
So once I get it about halfway through there, I'm gonna push that tip of the hook through just like that. And then I'm gonna finish pulling up this worm. And what I like to do is to get that worm just over the eyelid of the hook there. Kind of helps hold it on there. Push it up on there. And there you go. Now that we've tied it all up, I've got my bobber on my main line, a bead, a swivel, and then off of that swivel, we went three, four feet to a number four hook and that pink worm. Now that we have all that tied up, I'm gonna take this bobber down. And this bobber, like I said, it acts as your weight. So what you do is you gotta push on the bottom there. It pops this little plastic up and that's gonna allow me to walk down to the lake and fill this bobber with water, which gives us the weight that we need to get this worm out to the, to where the fish are at. So I'm gonna walk down the lake here. So what I'm gonna do here, it's a little bit tricky, you guys. You get it up like this, out of the water. I've put this bobber on both ways, never really had an issue. Because you let those bubbles go out like that and it's actually water getting inside of there. Now before I lift it up, I'm gonna push that plastic back through there. And as you can see, now there's water inside of this bobber. Now, when I cast this out there, I like to try to cast as far as I can and then just let it sit. What's going to happen is this worm, it doesn't float, but it doesn't automatically just sink to the bottom. So it's just gradually falling. And that's what the fish like. They like that flutter up and down, up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast out there, let it sit, let it sink. And I'm going to slowly reel it in just a couple of cranks. And what will happen is this worm will actually get brought back up to the surface and that allows it to sink again. And that gives me even more time to get that reaction, that flutter, that bait going down, which is what is catching so many more fish than everybody else. So here, I'm just gonna look, you gotta watch everybody else's bobbers out there. Usually on a trout pond like this, there's gonna be a lot of other people. You won't be by yourself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I'm not getting in anyone's way. Let it rip out there. Now that I've casted my water bobber out there, I'm letting it sit. Letting it sit, just letting to see if it'll move. And I slowly reel it in. You'll see the bobber move a little bit. Oh, I just got bit right there. Then you let it sit. Sometimes when they grab it like that, I'll just give it a couple twitches. See if they'll come back for it. So now I'm starting to get a bite here. Starting to get a bite. I like to twitch it a little bit. What I like to do is I, I like to wait until I really start to see that bobber take off. When that bobber is just barely tapping and tapping, I don't like to hit him. But when it starts to take off real nice, that's when I'll get him. Oh! <laughs> First one was a failure. All right, guys, what I wait, what I like to wait for, what I did right there is I like to wait for that bobber to really start moving. And then I set the hook, not just on a little taps or anything like that. When they really have it to let you know, a lot of times there's, there's more than one fish there and you'll miss them. They'll come in and just a pack of piranhas just biting at it. And if you end up pulling, you're gonna end up pulling away from that one fish that was gonna actually commit to it. One thing I'm really liking about these Mad River worms though, is you're not allowed in Washington to release trout that are caught on bait. These are unscented worms. And as you can see, the hook gets in there really nice. It's right in the corner, which allows me to come out here and to catch many fish and just catch and release and let some kid catch that fish another day. All right, guys, well, that's the complete setup from rod, reel, line, tackle, all the terminal, and actually catching a fish. Um, this, this system works really good. Uh, we caught a lot of fish today on it. Uh, let me know, do you guys, you guys ever seen this setup before? Do you guys tow anything else behind one of these water bobbers? Or let me know how you guys do, what you guys think about it. If you guys like this tutorial, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more content.